Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Welcome, everybody. Don't know if you can hear me or not. Jesus, every word, Bible study. Matthew, we're up to Matthew chapter 20, verse 24. 30th of June, Friday, 2023, number 126. Praise the Lord and God bless everybody. Thank you, Lord Jesus, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. And welcome all, anyone from YouTube. Praise the Lord. God bless you. And um, welcome. And um, I'm trying to make it so that it will be um, interesting and you won't fly away in two seconds. And everyone does that on, a lot of people do that on Facebook too. They look and then they're gone. So we're trying to hold your attention, try to keep the speed up. But also, we try to share and speak in language that um, for those who English is not their first language, right? So we are international. Jesus is international. Yeah, that's a cool word, right? International. Yeah, man. We're international. Hence, praise the Lord Jesus. But, yep, this is where your little old guy who's doing this, me, my name's Simon. Praise the Lord Jesus, but really, Jesus' name is more important, right? Can you see? Up there, uh, over there, see? That's Jesus' name. Jesus, every word, Bible, it's a bit hard. All back to front. Er. Study. <laughs> I made it. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. God's word is the elixir. God's word is the miracle. God's word is everything. God's word is medicine. God's word is spirit. You know that, right? Because it says in the Bible. God's word is life. It says that in the Bible too. God's word is God, right? Like uh, when you read a book written by um, a famous person, like, uh, um, what's his name? Dickens. Charles Dickens, okay? He has a style. He has a home. He has a culture. He has a, a face and a personality and his books can be recognized that's a famous writer okay in our culture in the english culture in the english language which is international thank you yep and it's international because okay i'm going to lose you now but that's too bad because the missionaries were english and they were really keen to spread the good news of the gospel to all the new tribes, tongues, and languages, and cultures around where the whole world. God has the whole world in his hands. God bless everybody. Welcome to all the new ones. Welcome to all my viewers on Facebook. However, we're adjusting to an international audience. And, um, yep, we've got good... Um, thank you for your following and for uh, sticking and being faithful. I didn't... There was a day the other day when... I was on here for half an hour on my own. There was something wrong with the technology. And then on... There's been attacks, man. We are under attack. The enemy is trying to stop this. Five viewers. Hallelujah. Woo-hoo-hoo. -hoo. Okay, that doesn't sound a lot. But actually, those low numbers indicate... Uh, those numbers, when they're on there, indicate that cameras are locked in, Right? And it does usually, where there's more comments and everything else goes up. So 10 minutes, 15 minutes. We are up to 60 hours viewing time on YouTube, right? That's 60 hours total time that people have watched our videos and Bible studies. And the Bible studies that we are now loading onto YouTube straight from here. No editing, not yet. We will be editing, we will be improving, we will be making it better. Um, but also, I do like the spontaneity of the Holy Spirit and the power. And it is pretty cool, uh, like 
on Monday, who can remember? I just went, man. It was, I was just full. And here I go again, right? Because I do want to do the scriptures. We are working through Jesus' scriptures, but also the Spirit's on me and I've got to share. And I've got so much in me. We haven't run out yet. And I do this, no notes, no preparation, except prayer. Uh, we do, um, I radio, TV, every, all distractions go off. And I go into just quiet time for one or two hours before. Yeah. And just go you know, get into that, because if I, I can't, if I watch a cricket game or some stupid worldly thing on TV, and then go straight into this, what's the the spirit's just going to be gone. Uh, the Holy Spirit doesn't stick around for worldly rubbish, especially these days. So hallelujah, thank you Jesus. The missionaries took God's word, this exact same word, the King James version. Yeah, the whole world was bred, brought up and raised and the the church of today, the Presbyterians, Anglicans, all those denominations, the big ones from a couple of hundred years ago were all built and raised on Holy Bible, King James Version. Um, thank you, Jesus. And that was translated from the original manuscripts agreed by all everybody, the scholars and Christians and everyone to be the correct, accurate manuscripts. Some or a lot of modern versions use different, suspect, inaccurate original manuscripts because just like today with weak versions the enemy was putting out weak versions back then too there are manuscripts which are not inspired and pure yeah so without being a bible scholar and somebody who studies anthropology and archaeology and all those fancy big words right so thank you lord hallelujah this is good enough but modern versions have to change. They have to change because by law, they cannot be the same as this one. Why not? Because of copyright and because they want to sell their Bibles and make money, 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 money. Yeah. So this one is not, has no copyright. Thank you, Jesus. We can use it, copy it, however we want. But modern versions, NIV and those ones, they're all got copyright. Ah, somebody owns them. Well, the only person who owns the King James is God. This is God's word. It's not perfect because men have been involved, but it's good enough. And that's how God works. God ordained to work through us yeah yeah he has god has limited himself that's why he didn't write any books yeah why didn't he write a book uh-huh he didn't make any formal organization uh-uh not the catholic church not any church nope he just loved and healed and blessed and did the perfect uh, will of God, the Creator, giving out the Spirit of God, which we know is love. God is love. God is His Word, as much as I am my Word, and, and you are your Word. People know you by your words. My family know me by my words. The Bible says every person will give an account for every word. Ooh, yeah. So we've got to get this, right? God's word is more important than anything. That's how we know about salvation. If you didn't have this Holy Bible, 
you would not know about the salvation gospel good news message that Jesus came on earth from God, was sent by God, lived on earth, perfect God living with mankind. And then he was, things happened and he got crucified and killed and tortured and beaten. And he was perfect and holy and good. And through that process, it was a sacrifice. All the cultures from way back have sacrifice uh, style uh, rituals in their cultures. Uh -huh. Yes, they do. All of them. And most of them, in fact, all of them, except the believers in Jesus, sacrifice to false gods, other gods, not the God of Jesus, not the Creator God. If they were worshipping the Creator God, then when, G when they hear about Jesus, they receive immediately because their spirit is the same. So thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, I've got to keep going. So also one more little uh, thing, just a bit of um, information. I think... Um, we may move over to YouTube when we get up to Matthew chapter 24. So you're going to have to write to me or put in the comments if you're genuine and you're interested in more. Um, if you can't get YouTube or haven't got it, you should be able to. It's free. Yep, it's free. Um, the Bible apps are free too. So you should, if, you, if you've got phones and you, if you've got Facebook, you can get YouTube and you can get, and if you can't, you've got to let me know. And you've got to, you can get Bible apps too. We're serious. We're studying God's word. We take God's word seriously. I'm not playing games. We want to grow stronger into the close, into the God's heart. God's heart. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. So quick prayer, Lord, in Jesus' precious name, please bless every single one. Heal them, provide them, give them your power and your spirit and your love, Lord Jesus. Send your love and power out, Lord, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have given us this, this work to do, this service. This is such a blessing. We are slaves. Servant, in King James Bible, in Greek, actually comes from the word slave and that's an example of changing god's word a little bit because back then they had a hang up even back then when this was translated they already knew that slavery was wrong so they didn't it was like in their face to put um everywhere where it says servant to change it to put slave so they changed it to servant and actually we are slaves of Jesus. Here we are. So that's another, all the worldly people, because they've been on the worldly doctrines and false doctrines, they choke. They're going to choke on that sort of thing because they've been on a wrong diet, wrong word of God. And even, right, so that's one Okay, so then, are we going to chuck the whole thing out? No, we'd be wise. Wise as serpents and harmless as doves, right? However, in reverse, the NIV and the other modern versions have countless changes like that. And they leave verses out. There's all kinds of holes and gaps. And also, there's doctrines, doctrinally, if you know what you're studying, especially in Paul's writings, they change things so that it becomes your works your good deeds that save you not jesus gift and death on the cross and it's a gift from god and jesus that he did that that's a free gift so when we fully receive that free gift of god's love Right, freely you have received, freely give. His love fills us up to then 
want to do his will in our lives and the own and we we were taught that when we were young and we failed why i know why now because in the la because when we study god's word it's god's word that works through us it's jesus that works through us so when we get into god's word we are giving ourselves like slaves into god's will and letting him and his word and his will come into us into our heart and into our spirit and then that is how god's work gets done and guess what right old man okay 66 years old been around a long time and i've been saying this we god sent me out the other night it was raining cold freezing 11 o'clock at night right people who look at me and they look at my nice warm lounge and they think oh he's got nice warm clothes uh -uh. god I, i've been around i've done it mate i've done the hard yards i've been on the road i've been on the streets i've been out oh yeah and uh, then also i've been in business but even that you know god was actually doing it and now because i can't not do it how can i how can i keep reading god's word and not do what he asks and says to do see and that's what ha that's how sin goes you don't want to sin anymore it just goes nothing you do it you change i just know and forgiveness forgiveness is huge forgiveness is also pray about it please if you feel like you've got blocks and things going wrong look into your heart look into what happened in your past and see where you got hurt where things went wrong look some of you may not okay you may have had loving parents and good homes right and so therefore you are really blessed because when you have love in your home it's easier to receive god's love it's easier to be like that right yeah but also sadly um the depth may not be the same so mary magdalene god said to whom god has forgiven much the same loves much all right this is well known this principle and i knew it when i was younger and i felt like how am i going to be deep and strong with you god um i don't feel like i've been a really bad person uh but he knew what he was doing because the the traumas and those things that happened before that which i wasn't conscious of as a young person i became conscious later when other things happened and they're all connected then i just built up a lot of anger and resentment and rage internal i still controlled it but i was angry man and it's been taking me down and destroying me destroying everything spiritually emotionally psychologically so god's been working on me for a long time and now so now he got me in a place after getting into our bible like how we are to do some pretty heavy duty forgiving and that has lifted off a ton of bad evil stuff that was controlling me and sometimes in the morning when i wake up my subconscious before i wake up is thinking about past wrongs i don't know and i'm shocked now because i recognize it i'm recognizing it and i'm getting stronger and stronger and i'm getting rid of it fast but before when i had issues those dark bad thoughts okay they would be in my subconscious coming to my early before waking up and they were overshadowing my daily dealings I've, I've i've i know the difference now so this morning i got rid of it fast and then i was in the kitchen and it came back i got rid of it 
I knew what I, because now I know. And I've been doing that for a long time. So now, and it, it does combine up with scientific um, about the mind. They have found or discovered uh, the plastic, it's called the plasticity of the brain. So you can actually train your mind and brain and there's, there's grey dark areas in there. So those um, unforgivenesses, all those hurts, all those difficulties and problems and horrible things create dark areas in there. And that it slows down your um, connectors and, and your brain. It changes your brain and it's spiritual. It's actually damaging your spirit. And they now know that can be healed and changed by good thoughts kind thoughts loving thoughts and you can stop those other ones consciously but it's very hard if you've had a lifetime of darkness and evil and it's become it controlling your brain and mind so another thing about that is may a lot of you may not know may not have heard you can look it up your heart they now know the heart has a second intelligence a deeper intelligence imprinted and copied from your brain so that's getting into your soul right so there's a connection right all everything going on out there so now that's why god's word is so important so romans 12 1 i'm going to read it. i've quoted it before now, paul was onto it man paul was onto it so Praise the Lord Jesus. But Jesus' words and teachings are higher than Paul's. And when you study and learn, you'll see a huge difference. There is a huge difference. Paul comes nowhere near Jesus. Well, everything in the Gospels in Matthew, Mark, Luke and John is eternal. It has to stand and be relevant. For the, 20, for the 21st century, the 19th century, the 18th century, all the way back then, 2,000 years, there's nothing that's like that. Because actually, I can prove, and Paul even says himself, quite a few of his things are outdated and irrelevant. All right. So now, we also know from the Old Testament that Jesus came to fulfill the law. Some of the stuff in the Old Testament is outdated and been moved and uh, superseded and fulfilled, right? It's there for our schoolmaster. Well, some of Paul's stuff is like that. So Paul's stuff just ranks with other Christian writers, and he's a book writer. Although he was a special apostle, right? Don't get me, I don't want you to get me wrong now. I'm not speaking against the scriptures or anything. I'm just saying be aware of the difference. And also the rank of Jesus' words above the words of a man through the Spirit through a man, through Paul. And some of the practical advice about church building is very similar to Moses and his writings and how they organized, um, they had judges. Um, you know, over the people, I think, because he couldn't do it all. That was practical. So they had practical mechanisms to judge and rule. I think, yeah. The, the, the people. They were divided into tribes and divided into groupings and there were practical elements of the law to run and organize the nation and kingdom of Israel, Zion, Eretz Israel, Zion, Greater Israel. Right? So that's now moved all into the kingdom of God and um, the kingdom of heaven and spiritual kingdom. Jesus is our king in the lineage of King David. So we had King David, then all the kings, and they all went bad. So then it all fell apart and was uh, at the same time we had the prophets and the law uh, the um, the Levitical priesthood and the prophets and that all died and faded out 400 years 
before Jesus came. God went silent. He shut up because then he was sick of it and their disobediences and rebelliousnesses. And so then, because, and also a big period of silence to make it more powerful and more of a cataclysmic, incredible um, spiritual event of the arrival of Emmanuel, God with man. So God was with man. God walked around in the body of Jesus with men. Jesus was God. Jesus is, is he was from God. There was no Joseph did not father biologically Jesus. Jesus was fathered biologically by God and the Spirit of God. So yeah, so all the prophecies, and there's a lot, Jesus, the man, well now, the Spirit of God, the King of everything, the creator of the world, because he was, he was there when the world was created, is coming back to complete what he started. So yeah. So new Jerusalem and all that is going to come, and there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. That's all way in the future. But there's also going to be the thousand year reign of Jesus. So we surely need to learn and know what Jesus taught and how he taught and how he worked and how he operated. And I can tell you, when you start reading it and you get to know it, you'll notice and you'll start to learn and see, well, wait a minute. Yeah, that's all I'm going to say. All right, so the, God's word will change you, will remove sin, and will bring you into his spirit, and faith will grow, miracles will happen, everything. And it's nothing that you do, except, except your will for obedience, and then getting into God's word, because now you're learning. So there's couples over there. I know people. They're very beautiful, sweet people. If you start reading your Bible... You're going to move out of all that misery that you're in. Yeah, you are. You know, it might not happen today or tomorrow, but it will happen. You want to change? You want a better life? Get into God's Word. That's all Jesus did. If you study it and start... Jesus didn't do a... Um, he didn't have a food kitchen. He did feed them, but it wasn't his permanent job or his most important job. And he didn't have um, a house building projects for the homeless. And he didn't have, um, you know, uh, opportunity shops with lots of cheap and more free clothes to f clothe them. But he does say in his word, yes, do that, right? Feed the poor, help others, help the less fortunate. But if you get into what Jesus actually did, he didn't do that. He went around teaching about the spirit of God and the word of God. All of it. That's what he did, and we're going to do it now. We're going to, I'm going to continue. But just quickly to um, to marry this up, because I was supposed to be going to read you Romans 12, 1. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans. So that's Paul, his first letter. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. How does that fit with slave? What I just said half an hour earlier. See? God's word confirms. I didn't know this was here. Present your bodies a living sacrifice. Holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So as slaves, we serve God. Servants of God is actually slaves of God. But it's not like how the world does it. 
And the reason they don't like this is because they're all hung up. They're all leader centric. You're not a slave to your leader. No. You're not a slave to your brother. We are brothers. We are to love one another and bear one another's burdens and help one another. But we're not to control and boss and coerce. Jesus never did it. Jesus never did it. He never coerced them. He, t he did tell them the right way. But then they had to choose if they wanted to do it. It's just like with our children. When they're teenagers, you can't, if they're not, if they're going some other way, all you can do is say what you know to be a better way. And then they can decide for themselves. So then later, they'll work it out. Oh yeah, when, when that happened, then oh, I, did this, I did this and that and that. I was an idiot. Oh, that's right. Yeah. They, they, and they'll know because you've taught them the right way. But they've chosen it for themselves. That's how God is with us. We choose for ourselves. And that's really important. And God is all love and he's all incredibly patient and loving. So it doesn't matter. Whatever position we're at. And then when we study the other teachings, we'll learn. We already did, right? The, the parable in chapter 20 about the workers being employed in the morning and working 12 hours for one penny and then other workers coming along and only working one hour and still getting a penny. So that's a huge insight into how God thinks about those things and how we're not to covet and compare and compete with one another. So, and it all comes from God's word and like you can't know it all in one go it's gradual and god honors it at we where you're at so where you are at so you could be a new person reading the bible and you can get more blessed and more reward right now than someone like me who's who's been on the track i've been on the journey a long time we were missionaries we did stuff we've been places we, were, we had the call of God on us and we gave up a lot and then we didn't get huge it didn't like it doesn't turn out like how you think right but I'm just saying that to compare or not compare but to highlight this principle you can get in you can you you can be into God's word now with a hungry pure heart and be closer to God than me. Not that we compare, because the second you compare or think like that, you've lost it. The first shall be last, the last shall be first. As soon as we, as soon as we start thinking like that, we've lost it. See? Because that's how the Spirit of God is. The Spirit of God comes and goes. And that's why I keep on going on about it. Because actually God's Word and Jesus, it's all about the Spirit of God. And 90% of the Christian churches are not into the Spirit of God. And the little churches that are, are usually the ones who are called and poked at and told they are kooky. And unfortunately, sadly, some of them do go kooky because they lose their way because they don't stay founded in Jesus, in God's Word. God's Word will keep you founded in God's Word and in Jesus too. Both. Yeah. Yeah. That's how you stay true. You can't go wrong with Jesus at front and center. Right? There's lots of parables about that. You know, the, the sailor on his boat, he's at the helm. Um, and um, so the helm is like, uh, he's hanging on to Jesus. So then he knows the way. I don't know if that's right or not. Um, there is something like that. So, um, but the, the point is we make Jesus front and centre. Our goal is Jesus. We're heading towards Jesus. We're getting closer to Jesus. We're thinking about Jesus. We're copying him. We're worshipping him. Everything is about Jesus. So, it's not just 
a worldly organisation, a club that meets together and has things in common. No, it's more than that. It's about the spirit. So now, thank you, Jesus. In God's word, right? So we've just found out about Romans 12, that we present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your or our reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world. See why we need every word? Because actually we all know the famous bit coming up, or many people do, but we, we forget the other stuff, and that's just as important. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed, changed. Transformed means changed. By the renewing of your mind. Scripture new. God's word new. The mind can be renewed. Right? The cells change and grow. They're renewed all the time. But your mind, the way you think, which actually then imprints over to your spirit and intelligence and your heart the way you think what does God want? He wants us to think like Him yeah, He does He actually does we are one body with Christ we're individuals and we've all got different looks and cultures but our spirit your spirit, in the spirit of God, is the same as mine. We're part of the same spirit. We are part of God's spirit. When we believe in God and receive the spirit, we become one body in Christ, in Jesus, in the spirit of God. Yeah, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, who is also called the Comforter. Um, and helper comforter and helper see the Holy Spirit is our comforter and helper Jesus is the word and the son God is the father and creator of everything and be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God? So that's that's what I was talking about. Backing up now, negative dark thoughts that sneak in all the time. When we live in God's word, God's word will get rid of it, along with your will. And the, when we're in God's service, and I'm sure you guys who are will know that there are tests actually. Because there are times we want to give up, we want to have a rest, we want to quit. And then God wants to see, well, what are you going to do? Are you going to keep choosing me in my way and trusting? Or are you going to sort of uh, go the other way? Um, or in, in, like, because I just know there's, I can jump off this any time, so far. But I can't, in another way I can't. I'm locked in. Because then I'm disrespecting the anointing. But I've learned to go in step with him. And he does not give us more than we can handle. When we were young, we had leaders giving us more than we could handle. Oh, yeah. And I think there's a lot of that going on. Yeah, they do. They don't even know what they're doing. Anyway, we forgive all that, right? I've had to do that. I've gone through, we lost a house. Not, yeah, through through horrible leaders. And I've had to forgive that. I've had to hit, forgive that guy. It was, it was pretty bad. Because it was on the mission field. Yeah. Yeah, we had, God had blessed us, our home and family and everything. It was huge. And some other people came in with us. They took over. He was um, ex-military. He had um, marine training. 
and he was supposedly some kind of Christian missionary, but he wasn't much of a Christian. But you know, I have to forgive that and heal from it. It's okay, brother. We all make mistakes. I made my mistakes and you made yours. We're equal in God's sight in so much that we're forgiven by him. Get it? See? So, And I pray that yeah, we'll see each other and hug and kiss again. Because God's teaching me to do that with everybody. You think about it. Your enemies. That's what Jesus said. Love your enemies. And some of them have already passed on. I've got people I know. And I will and pray. But it's in God's hands. I don't know if they were believers or not. Where they're at with God. But all I know is I don't want them to be out because of me. So I pray that they will be saved and healed and in heaven and it's God's business in between them but my, I'm not wishing any bad thing on them it's really important and um, that thing about people who you're not sure if they believe or not and they were bad and horrible to us so um, then it becomes well you know haha, you're in hell now well no that's wrong if they are in that area, it's because of God's will and judgment, not ours. Because God clearly says, if you don't forgive others, I'm not going to forgive you. That's a huge warning. And Jesus taught it a lot. And I don't remember Paul teaching a lot about forgiveness, actually. Now that I think about it. If you want to forgive or need forgiveness... You're going to have to read Jesus' words and Jesus' words will do it through you and for you. All you did was have the will and the obedience to get into his word and then the blessings... See, what happens is all that... That's like um, oppression, darkness, clouds, holding you back, holding you down, keeping you poor, keeping you miserable, keeping you sad, keeping you angry, whatever. Just or in the wrong, you know, in in Jesus we need to be joyful. When we get the full salvation, and I don't care what suffering anybody's in, because I know that Jesus suffered more than any of us. You f I, you find me someone who suffered more than Jesus? Sorry, no way, no way, because the heart of suffering. Is when you give love and you do the right thing and they still trample on you. And I'm using polite words. I would like to use a pretty strong swear word, but I'm not, right? I, they, that's what happens, right? When you can take that and go, God, forgive them, you're getting somewhere. And not having any angry toward them. Well, sorry, but I don't know about you, but... For me, I know that I had a hard time in that area. And I know now that God's healing me from all that. So now I know, and it's from God's word. And I was explaining before, right? 126. And before we were doing two hours. So we're up to about 150 hours of reading God's word. Okay, we're not reading his word, but we will in a minute. Um... And we've gone, we've done all of the chapter Matthew from chapter 1 up to 20 and a, a few others in between. But when we do it, you'll see how, right? We're going to do it now. There was just one more little thing um, about God's word and forgiveness. So, um, it's Jesus' word. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. So Christ, or Jesus, gives us the strength to do anything. Remembering Jesus is the word of God. 
So Jesus' word will give you the power and the strength and the grace to do those things that the worldly people can't even think about. Because they talk about goals and dreams and your mind can get you anything, think and grow rich, mind valley. I've, I've actually put it on my YouTube because it was interesting, but they're good concepts. But actually, they're nowhere near, anywhere, what God wants and wills for the salvation of the world for the love of the world, for God so loved the world, right? And and in his teachings, in Jesus' words, in Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, we have how and where and when and the means. The word is the means, that Jesus is the means. That will work in us and get the job done. And we actually don't do anything. We're a channel for God's word. All we do is give ourselves over to his will. That's the hard bit. So sometimes, but even that's not hard, right? Because I, the Lord was telling me for about a week, because I was sharing about it, that he was going to be sending me out. I knew something was coming up and I knew, I knew, I knew. I could have pulled out, I could have backed off. I said, could have been like, oh, I'm too old now. But no, I knew, right? And... And we were going to do Sunday night. No, it didn't work out. Monday night. No, it didn't work out. And then we forgot about it. And then a door opened on Wednesday night. And I had to... That was the night we... There was a, something happened and I couldn't do the study. And then later... I've got a teenager in the house, okay? I think that gives away everything, right? We, we did a late night something. And... Um, then I was free for an hour and a half or so, and that was my opportunity. And I went and walked the streets. Oh yeah, baby. And God led me to a special person. And it took a while, because I was wandering around, wandering around. It took about half an hour to 40 minutes, and it was raining and freezing. A cold, wintry night. I was looking out for homeless, looking out for this one, that one, whoever. Up here, there, up into car parks, into places where they might be hiding in holes and keeping an eye on my back and watching out there wasn't somebody coming with a knife and all that, right? I was being like pretty, not jumping at shadows, but I was walking in the power of the Lord with my eyes wide open and being wise. And it, they, when, when an evil person sees that, you're more powerful because you've got the power of the Lord on you and you're like, uh, don't mess with me, boy. And you don't have to say nothing. And they just know, right? So, and they respect, they respect, there's actually a street level respect for this. Yeah. So, if you know what you're doing, you're fine. Okay. And I do, because I've done it before, a long time ago, right? So anyway, and then around this way, and I went in a direction, and I was like, and then, da-da, what's going to happen? And I'd given up. I was like, oh, well, whatever, I won't meet anyone. I'll just go back and pick up, you know, and finish off where we were doing. And then there was a person. Oh, can you give me a cigarette? And I'm, then the door was open. <laughs> And I could not, it was just a miracle. And I talked with the person for more than half an hour. It made me late. And we, I heard, I heard the life story. And yep, a person, it was just exactly like God told us in his word. And as much as you have done it to the least of these, my brethren, you have done it to me. And I am not sent, but, I'm, but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So, and then quite often in Jesus' teachings where it says to go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in. And I think in another place, he says to go out and find the lost, the lost sheep, right? That's the least of Jesus' brethren. The littlest lost sheep, they're little believers who are lost. And you wouldn't know because... Their, their, their life is lost, right? Broken, right? And this person had been to a very wealthy school, was from a wealthy suburb, and all those things. And you would never, ever know, ever. And because they were reduced down to begging for cigarettes, 
um, late at night on a cold freezing night when no one is out there. So, yeah, that's pretty low. This person, I could tell, wasn't that you can go lower. They could have been rougher looking, could have had, um, I think some teeth were missing. Yeah, teeth were missing. Uh, this is a woman, by the way, it's a female. And so that's serious. And um, all, yeah, marks. Um, so I don't want to say any more, but enough. And then we, and then I, I explain. I told this person at the end, right when we were, for, 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 like, because they knew a, a bit about things, and I was like, "Yeah, well, do you realise what's going on here?" And I said, "Well, Jesus said, and I quoted it: when we go out to talk to people or find people or do whatever what we're doing, He said, in as much as you have done it to me." You have, um, in as much as you've done it to me, you have done it to the least of these. In as much as you've done it to the least of these, my brethren, you have done it to me. And and the person lit up. Because the spirit, you're making me equal with Jesus. That's how it was received. How cool is that? And then I thought, well, well that's really cool. Well, they've really received this. And then I got turned on. And then... We were like, I, I said, well, Jesus is right here in the middle of us. So that was a touch. So I may never see them again, but I just wanted to see that God's word has done this because I've been working. I'm a company director. I was driving trucks. I was a businessman. I was a man of the world. And yes, I've had um, training in the past, Christian uh, things. And... Um, but I've been uh, pretty much like church people. I've been living like a church person for the last 30 years. <laughs> and yeah, going to churches in and out. Of, I've been to a lot of churches. But with the way things have gone, I'm now a, uh, whatever you guys know. And so um, what was the point? The point was, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Um, he... He does the work for us, right? So that's what's happening. And there's more coming. We've already had. And so if you guys are really getting, oh, yeah, okay, that's fine. You you can get into it as much or as little as you like. It's up to you. <laughs> I'm not trying to make any big thing. All we're doing is giving out God's word and putting it out there, right? The The, the pure word of God that I know. Anyway, from, from the original scriptures. Oh, we're probably going over time again. Okay, we've got eight minutes. We'll probably go a little bit over. And Lord Jesus, please thank you, Lord, for hearing, um, um, uh, for blessing us and protecting us. And God bless everybody. I'm not looking at the comments. Um, I'll look after and I'll say hello. And just give a huge plug. Please, um, if you can look at YouTube, uh, subscribe on there and I know some of you have thank you because we went from 14 to 48 in a couple of weeks so that's um, 48 30 30 subscribers in two or three weeks and 60 hours and we're getting messages congratulations we've got with 10,000 views we're now up to 12,000 so you do need those high numbers so, and don't forget, we're not doing military aeroplanes and funny worldly comedy and all, you know, stuff that they do to get people's attention. You know, women with blah, 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 and all that stuff. We're not, and all, um, you know, popular garbage, but some of it's kind of interesting and we can do a little bit of it too, science things. Um but all the, the all the, the aeroplanes and the jets and the carriers, all the things that we that distract us and worldly things, we're not doing that. They are. So when we get one view, it's probably equivalent to a thousand views compared, right? What they're doing, and also, so does that make sense? So we and and also we lift up Jesus, and that, it's harder. And in, in all our ministry work, everything that we do, 
we need to be doing it in Jesus' name. And that's hard too. Yeah, it does, but the Spirit of God will honor it and, and God will provide. It's harder, be less, it's, there's less people that will be um, available to donate or support or help because you know, they don't want to know about Jesus. But when we work, and that's in Jesus' teachings, it's all the way through there. He says, in my name, anyone who's a true Christian knows this. We know, Jesus said, go in my name. Do it in my name. We just read it the other day. Give a, whoever gives a cup of cold water, it says cold water too, not just water, cold water. That means refreshing water. In my name, uh, um, will receive their reward. Thank you, Jesus. So it's so important to not be shy of Jesus' name. We are here to give Jesus to the world. All right? Jesus, world. See? I didn't even plan that. And there you got it there. Every word, and it's in red, because Jesus' words in the Bible are red. All right? Okay. Amen? It's all done by God's Holy Spirit. Because I didn't plan it. I didn't know. And it's really cool because Jesus is for everyone. So, every word for everyone. All right, thank you, Jesus. Matthew chapter 20, verse 24. And this is amazing because it's continuing the same teaching in the previous two or three chapters, which when you just read the chapters, you don't get the connection. If you just gloss over it and read da-da-da-da-da, but when we study it, exegesis, every word style, oh my gosh, this is a complete teaching. It's He's done it three times. This principle coming up, he's gone over it already several times. And he's doing it patiently. Right? So now, we did it the other day. The mother of Zebedee came up to Jesus. She wanted to ask him something special. And she wanted her sons to sit on the throne next to God. <laughs> what was she thinking? And Jesus said, you know not what you ask. Are you able to drink my cup? Are you able to be baptized with my baptism? And um, they actually said, yeah, we are. You wouldn't normally think they would, would you? But yes, they are. What was Jesus' cup? He had to die on the cross. What was his baptism? He had to get baptized into death. Well, all the disciples were, they had the same experience. They all got martyred. Ah, so therefore they are able. And Jesus said to them, you shall drink indeed of my cup and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. But, to sit on my right hand and on my left is not mine to give, but it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared of my Father. It's in God's hands. It's none of our business. All right. Now, this is the reaction of the others. Because Zebedee, Zebedee's mother, I think, uh, Zebedee was the husband. I'm pretty sure she was John and James's mother. And now we get the reaction from the disciples. Verse 24. And when the ten heard it, they were, what do you think they were? Let's see. What were they? Verse 24, 25. They were. And when the ten heard it, they were moved with in Nation. That's a strong word. Against the two brethren. They were moved with indignation against the two brethren. Their own brothers, uh, well, disciples. It's a little bit like the 12 sons of Jacob, right? 
They didn't like Joseph. They got jealous of him because he had some special dreams. He was chosen by God. And they said, stuff you. We're going to stick you in your place. And they threw him into a pit and left him there to die. Yeah, nice brothers. All right? Ah. It's akin to murder. They left him there for dead. So now we've got the disciples. And the ten of them are angry. Indignation. Now, who remembers a couple of chapters ago? Um, they, are, they were talking amongst themselves, who will be greatest? What did Jesus say? He brought a little child and gave them a teaching about this. To be like this little child, except you, to the disciples, he was teaching them, and they were already saved. But he said, except you be changed and become as this little child, you will not enter heaven. He warned them. Right, and then the next chapter, he's moved away. He's teaching them about a big teaching, important about divorce and adultery. And somebody brought a little child in. What do the disciples do? Rebuke them. And again, Jesus teaches them about the importance of little children. And he prays for a little child. Now we've got this. So it's an ongoing theme. And this is what... Nobody teaches. I've never heard this teach. I've been teaching it, but not like this. I've known this for many years. But I used to talk about it with other people in the churches, and I just knew. And I had to put up with it because I, w I wasn't the leader. And the leaders were such, you know, they didn't know these scriptures, so they couldn't do it. You've got to know this stuff before you can do it. And learn God's way. And it's just completely different. So now we get Jesus, the red words. But Jesus called them to him and said. So they must have been out and about. They weren't all close by. And they were moved in with indignation because this happened. And it says the disciples heard about it. So it would have got communicated and... Um, talked about, it was being discussed, and they obviously weren't quite... So he got them together. See how you get the whole picture? It's there. It's in the Word of God. Read it. I'll read it again. But Jesus called them to him. Where were they? They were out talking amongst themselves. Jesus called them. Come to me. See, it's interesting, right? And said, you know that the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them. And they that are great exercise authority upon them. What did Jesus say before about being great? See? So that's, we're, not, we're not supposed to be like that. Well, and here Jesus says it. But it shall not be so among you. Verse 26. But it shall not be so among you, but whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister. And that's Jesus, that word there must be accurate, what um, they've translated. So Jesus doesn't use that word very often. So minister, because now in the English, the, the government workers and leaders are called ministers in the English system the prime minister minister for finance uh, they're ministers right the word minister and I think the true word is when Peter's wife got healed she was sick Jesus healed her she got up and she ministered to them she gave them cups of tea and whatever she did being a woman, helping the workers. She ministered to them. That's what ministers do. They serve the food. <laughs> yes, they do. When you minister someone, you give them food, clothes, anything. It's a service. You open the door. But now, oh no, it's, it's completely opposite. 
So servants gets closer, and being a slave is even closer. So, um, so Jesus has flipped this around, but it shall not be so among you, but whoever will be great among you, let him be your minister. Okay, so now some people would flip that around and say, oh, okay, so the minister, the prime minister, is um, somebody important, and he's my minister. Right? So this is where you need the Holy Spirit. And because in verse 27, continuing on, and whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. Right? So up here where it says, let him, so, but it shall not be so among you, but whoever will be great among you, let him be your minister. And whoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. So, in the context of this, to minister is to give service. Or in this one here, servant, right? So, the, the leaders are supposed to be the servants and slaves and ministers. Not the government ministers, the servant ministers, the slave minister. And then he goes on in 28. His own example, even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered to, but to minister. So Jesus ministers to us. Jesus, see, is our minister, right? But he's not our high minister. He's our servant minister. Like, um, he washes our feet. He washed the disciples' feet. He ministered to the disciples when he washed their feet. He ministered to the people who were hungry when he fed them bread and fish from heaven. So the Son of Man came not to be ministered to, but to minister. And so there, it's a verb. To minister is a verb. It's an action word. It's not a noun. It's not a title. So, but to minister and to give. His life a ransom for many. I'm going to stop there now because we'll, we'll, otherwise we'll go too long. There it is there. His life a ransom for many. So that last verse was 29, I think. But even as the Son of Man came not to minister, but to minister and to give his life a ransom. What's a ransom? For many. What's a ransom? Do you know what a ransom is? A ransom is a big pile of money that you pay when you get kidnapped. So, if, you're, if someone kidnaps you and they demand money and then the parents say it's your son, the, ch the parents pay the money to save their son or daughter. A ransom is a payment to save someone or to um, get the treasure or some deal. So in this case, Jesus' life, he said, my life is a ransom. To who? To God. Verse 29. So in verse 28, just to repeat it, even as the Son of Man came not 
to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give and to give his life a ransom for many. So his life was a payment to God to get us back. We don't hear that very often, do we? It's actually quite good. In fact, it's fantastic. So Jesus, even as the Son of Man, came not to be ministered to, unto, he came not to be ministered unto, but we don't minister to him, but to minister. And to give his life a ransom for many. He gave his life to save many. Who did he give his life to? Gave it to God. Or you could say the devil, I suppose. No, it's God. God required him to do it. Yeah, it is. It's God. Wow. Wow. So that also increases your faith to know how much God loved you that he gave, he paid, he, he took his own son as a ransom. His own son Jesus was the ransom that God required to save us, to pay for us. It's true. And it had to be done because actually we are lost. We were lost. We were unsaved in darkness. Um, all of us were and it has come through Adam all the way through all mankind I've seen false doctrines against this just recently it's ridiculous I've had to get rid of them and I've checked in Genesis it's quite clear that the sin of Adam because they ate of the tree of God knowledge of good and evil and they were told not to and that therefore meant we all were going to have that knowledge of good and evil yeah we all actually have that now but it's been done in the wrong way in disobedience and so through that disobedience We've all, we, ha we have, we're all part of it because we have knowledge of good and evil and that's been removed from day one or very beginning when they uh, disobeyed God and ate of the tree of knowledge of good and evil because they were naked and they weren't ashamed and then after they got knowledge of good and evil they were ashamed and hid themselves. Another whole teaching, because it's, it's about the occult and prayer. But now we'll stick to this for now. And that's, we'll sign up. So already it's up to one and a quarter. So 15 minutes. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Lord. I hope and trust you got blessed. And a little announcement earlier was that, I don't know if I got it out clearly, but I'm praying about what we're going to do is... Um, when we get to Matthew chapter 24, the prophecy chapter, I'm letting you know now, we're on chapter 20, we've got 21, 22, 23, and I know 23 is about the Pharisees, um, and then 24 is prophecy. I'm going to be doing that on YouTube. So, yeah, if you want to, um, and we probably won't be live, but it will be available on there. 
See how many we keep. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Be blessed in Jesus' name. And thank you for following and listening. Okay, we went, we've got two. Thank you, locked in viewers and faithful listeners. It's a blessing. We had a lot in the beginning because I tried to start off with a bang because when I put, I'm going to put this on YouTube to try and attract them in. And I'm trying to keep it, you know, going. So if I'm talking too fast, please let me know. Or, and those things. God bless you, Shahid. I can see there. And God bless you, Mimi. Okay. I haven't forgotten you. And hello, me, Priangi. I'm, it's, it's so beautiful. I pray for you guys. And Teresa. What? Oh, yeah, that's okay, sweetheart. Titus, Titus, God bless you. Hope to see you come back. Joseph, oh yes, okay, right. Thank you. Come back. Oh, lots of new ones don't come back. Okay, go far. Amen. God bless you, brother. Wow, thank you, Jesus. God bless you all. Joseph Hans, greetings. Okay. I'll, I'll give you more comments later. All right, scroll down to the bottom now. Okay. All right, well, God bless everyone. Good night. I better see what that looks like. Good night. Or good day.